Hi Workday Experts, welcome to my channel. This is a very fast video I am creating on the Workday content. So uh, I hope you like it. So in this video, I'm going to cover how to improve the performance of the studio integration, which is a very complex integration. I have very good examples, very interesting examples, I should, I should say, where the performance has been improved from you know few hours, like seven hours to less than 10 minutes or like uh, you know six minutes to less than one second that kind of examples these are very interesting i hope you like the video so let's get started so why this video what is a you know i'll give you some introduction right as you know, the Workday Studio is the very complex and versatile, flexible integration type. You can do all, you can realize almost all the requirements which can be realized, uh, you know, within the Workday system. And uh, so, how to improve the performance of it? Because it's complex uh, and it is very flexible and uh, you know versatile. There are so many ways we can develop and uh, you know. I have observed uh, not optimum way, optimize, optimum way of uh, using the Workday Studio is not used by everyone. So I thought maybe I'll give you some kind of tips here. So I'd like to mention that at the end of this uh, video, I have given a example where you can download the Clare file and you can execute uh, on your tenant and see the difference by yourself first time. So I hope that that will be very helpful for you. So let's get started. So these are the techniques, five techniques I'm going to cover today. Uh, one is hash map versus XSLD 3.0 with maps. I'm going to uh, you know take uh, like five, approximately five five minutes to cover this. And the next topic is simple to simple access XML versus uh, workday XML. Next is optimum usage of calculated fields. These two are uh, a bit straightforward. And uh, instead of triggering the reports from Workday Studio, uh, you know, putting this report on the uh, business process, how to do that, what kind of advantages it gives. And the last topic is using the right web service. Uh, so that will be very helpful. It will improve the performance. So let's jump on to the first topic, which is the hash map versus uh, XSL 3.0. So generally, hash map is suggested to uh, you know look up value from one data set to the other data set and then get the values. And uh, hash map, by the very nature of hash map itself, is very fast. But uh, the the disadvantage with that is it's like a row by row passing. So instead, uh, I suggested I suggest um, to use the XSLT 3.0. Uh, that is with the maps that's like a batch processing it's very fast uh, in the very simple terms it's like a batch process right it's very fast with the with the very nature of uh, the the kind of xslt 3.0 works right and uh, i'd like to mention one example uh, you know when a few years back i've learned this xslt 3.0 mapping uh, on the xslt 3.0 and it, uh, the the integration i have designed used to take approximately three hours uh, with hash map and when i have used xslt it has reduced to five minutes so that's like a drastic and uh, dramatic improvement so uh, that was very interesting for me and uh, as i was mentioning right uh, there is an example in that example you can see the performance has increased improved from uh, you know, six or approximately seven minutes to less than one second. That's like a 350 times better performance. So you'll see at the end of the video. So this is what I am suggesting to avoid, like a splitter, it's like a row by row processing, and then here we have a hash map. So this is please try to avoid this and use an aggregator and to merge multiple files and use XSLT plus to use XSLT 3.0, right? That's about, uh, and uh, I'm here in this slide, I'm mentioning that there is an example at the end of that, uh, end of this video. 
let's jump to the second topic which is a simple xml versus worked xml so uh, why why what is the difference between simple xml and worked xml right any report any report uh, generally we we consume either on the eib or in the studio right the we we take the xml uh, source XML data and then we'll transform it into desired uh, output. So Workday, native Workday uh, data will be generated in the Workday XML. Whereas within the Workday system itself, it does one or two extra steps to generate an ex simple XML type. So there is an extra effort or extra burden on the Workday system to generate a ex simple XML. And it has less values, less uh, information or less data, whereas Word XML has more data, right? So what do I mean by that is, uh, uh, whatever the information you want, for example, reference ID or that kind of things, you can just pull from the Word XML. That is one thing. And the other thing is, uh, I have observed that, especially if we, the, the output is very heavy, the simple XML gets struck and then it won't complete. Because of that, the integration also gets struck and it won't complete. So I have encountered that kind of things uh, like uh, two to three times and then consistently from then onwards, I'm always using Word Excel, right? So that's my, uh, that's my experience. So I wanted to show you the difference between the word, simple XML versus worked XML. So if you observe, simple XML will have a straightforward data, whereas worked XML has much more data than uh, what you see on the report level. So you have the worker name and uh, workday ID and employee ID. All this information is there. You don't have to exclusively add one more field for workday ID and name. So like that. In the similar way, we have I have just shown you two more examples like company and location like that. The third topic is optimum usage of calculated fields. So what do I mean by that is uh, we should not use we should try to reduce the usage of calculated fields. I'll just give you one example and I'll tell you more information around that is. For example, there is a need to pull the company ID. Generally, we'll try to create a LRV, lookup related value, uh, that's a calculated field type, and we'll try to add to the report. But what I suggest is instead, just use the company and generate the workday XML and pull the uh, uh, you know workday reference ID company reference ID from workday XML that is very fast and reliable and uh, easy to read also even the, if you run the report the reference ID when you see the reference ID that's not easy to digest whereas company name is easy to understand easy to uh, you know work with right human beings we we want to see the names not the codes and all right and uh, and of course uh, you would have already known that uh, there is something called report performance logs you can always enable the report performance logs on the reports and try to understand which which field or which calculated field is taking more resources and then how to you know optimize it you can go through that later anyways right I'll just show you here, if you observe the company reference ID is already here. You don't have to exclusively add one more field. So like that. The fourth topic is, this is not directly related to the performance improvement, but it's just to avoid some of the limitations uh, you know, of the any you know, studio integration. As you know, the studio, any integration type, right, cannot run more than four hours in the workday system. So, um, for example, there, are, there is a report, there is a report or multiple reports which run for two hours. The, the logic part is left only with only two hours. So how to, for example, if the data is increasing or whatever the reason, you are running out of this four hours easily. So the one suggestion is that pull this report out of the studio and then put it in the business process level itself so that you will gain two hours here, whatever the you know report running time. And in this case, when the studio triggers the report, it's more of a waiting mode until the report uh, output comes into the studio. So in that way, we are trying to save some time on the workday uh, studio level. It's not a direct uh, improvement, but it's in some way it helps, right? 
And uh, our last topic is uh, using the right web service. So I'll just give you an example and then I'll go uh, more into that, right? As you know, especially for the payrolls, if you have worked on the payrolls, right? Submit payroll input web service is, uh, you know, robot or processing, whereas import payroll input is like, a, uh, you know, batch processing. You can run, uh, you can give as many number of uh, transactions as possible in the import payroll input. So in recently, I had to close 100,000 payroll inputs where uh, the conventional way of submit payroll input web service took approximately seven hours. Uh, seven hours is not a single stretch because there is a limitation of four hours. Like I had to load four different files of uh, 25,000 rows each, right? Then uh, I've spent like a day or so, uh, created a simple studio where it, uh, it, it receives us, uh, you know, pre-created uh, web service. Then all it does is it just triggers the web service to the studio or uh, workday system. So it, it, it completed less than five minutes with all, all the 100,000 rows. So you can leverage this kind of uh, things, right? So these are my five topics for today. If you have, uh, I'm sure there are so many topics how to improve and all. But uh, these are the, you know, very interesting and uh, in, a, in a nutshell, I should say. And if you have any questions or if you have more suggestions, please, please write in the comments. I'll get back to you uh, on that. And as I have promised, I have an example. I have an example where, uh, where we are trying, we, the, the studio has to combine the employee demographic information and employee payroll information into a single output. So I have in this within the same studio, I have taken two routes. One is the uh, hash map route and one is the XSLD route. And when you, uh, when you run the report, within the same, when, the, when you run the integration within the same integration, you'll see the difference between the performances, right? I'll just give you some glimpse of it. Uh, this is the report output. The difference is, um, you know, the, the hash map route took approximately seven minutes, six minutes, 53 seconds, whereas XSLT took 1.2 seconds, right? And uh, this is a glimpse of the document. This document is available in uh, LinkedIn. I'm going to give a URL for this document in this uh, video comments. So that's it for today. Uh, happy coding. I wish uh, you have, uh, I think you have enjoyed this today's session and I'd like to see more comments from you and that gives me uh, some kind of uh, motivation to create this kind of videos more. So let's meet in the next video. Thank you. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.